Hey guys, welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a really nice fire effect for your game using Shader Graph. Several months ago on the Asset Store, Unity released a free 2D sample project called Happy Harvest. It's a really cute little scene showcasing best practices for 2D lights, shadows, and visual effects. And the fire from that scene really caught my eye because it looks great and it's all shader driven. So we're gonna recreate that effect from scratch. I made a few minor tweaks to it just to give us a little bit more fine-tuned control over what the final flame looks like. Whether you're new to Shader Graph or not, there are some really useful techniques shown here that are worth learning. What we're gonna create will work for 2D, 3D, particle system, and visual effect graphs. Ready? Let's go. So the first thing we wanna do is to make sure that we have the VFX graph installed in the package manager. And once that's done, let's go into edit, preferences, visual effects, and select experimental operators and blocks. And I'll show you why in just a second. But first, we need to set up the shader we're going to use for our fire. And let's just create a blank shader graph and open it up. So we're going to set universal as the active target and change our material to unlit. And we're using unlit because this is fire, so we always want to make sure that the material is going to show whether there's light on it or not. And then we can go down here and select support VFX graph. And if you are using Unity LTS 2022, then the support VFX graph option will also work for sprite unlit if you want to do this as just a sprite instead of a VFX graph. But I'm on an older version, so that's not going to work for me. And I like unlit better anyways, because it'll ensure that this works for both 2D and 3D projects. Now we don't currently have an alpha option and that's no good. So let's change this to a surface type of transparent. Okay, so let's save this and we're going to come back to it in just a minute. Now let's create a visual effect and change the order and layers so it's on top of the ground, and we'll create a new asset template called Fire and open that up. And right away, you can see, just like the particle system, it generates a sort of template visual effect for us. But for now, go down to this output particle quad here and see how we have this shader graph option here? That is why we turned on the experimental operators and blocks. This option would not show up without that option selected. So let's plug in our Fire shader that we just made. And you're going to see that it changes to a bunch of gray squares, which makes sense because our shader isn't doing anything yet, and we'll get to that soon. But right now we want to change this VFX graph so it's only showing one constant block that doesn't move. So let's change a few things. We can get rid of this constant spawn rate, and if we press space, let's just add a single burst instead and put it to a count of one. Down here in initialize, go ahead and just delete out the set lifetime random to basically make these live forever, and let's get rid of any velocity. Down in the output particle quad, let's get rid of these two and add a set size and make it just slightly bigger. And also, if you don't like that the pivot is way up here, we can add a set pivot on the Y to correct that. Okay, let's actually make a fire shader now. So go ahead and open up our shader again. Now, when it comes to making shaders in Shader Graph, it's never a linear building process, just like code, but I find it easiest to start with the core of our visual and then go from there when possible. So the basis for our fire is going to come from these two nodes, Voronoi and Gradient Noise. And what we wanna do is to get them scrolling up and then combine them together. So to get them scrolling, and if you're new to Shader Graph, this is a core skill you're gonna to wanna to know, add a tiling and offset node into the UV slot and you can see if we move around the offset, it scrolls this around infinitely. So we can use the time node to do that for us. And let's add an exposed float called Voronoi speed set to minus one so that we can control it and multiply the time by the speed. And we only want to scroll on the Y, so let's just plug this into the Y on a vector two node and plug that into the offset. All right, cool. So let's do the exact same thing for the gradient noise, and we'll set up a separate float for that called noise speed set to minus 1.15. And it would also be nice to be able to control the scale, so let's also set up a float called Voronoi scale set to 6 and plug that into our cell density. and another float called noise scale set to five and plug that into the gradient noise scale. All right, so before we combine these, the Voronoi is mostly dark. So let's flip that by plugging it into a one minus node. 
And now let's multiply these results together. It doesn't quite look like fire yet, but we're getting there. Now, very important, we need to clamp this between zero and one. You can use a clamp node or a saturate node to do that. It doesn't matter which one you use since we're clamping from zero to one. Now, the next thing I wanna do is mask this so that the bottom is darker because what we're gonna end up doing later on is using the dark parts for the flame. So we want most of the flame at the bottom. And there's a very easy way to do that using a UV node. If we split this, this is gonna represent X, Y, and Z. So let's preview what the G or the Y looks like here. Awesome, and to control it more, let's plug this into a power node and then plug this into a multiply node. The multiply will really let us control the height of that bar. So let's actually create a float called flame height and make it a slider between zero and 50 and default it to 3.75 and plug that in here. Now let's combine this clamped value up here with this value down here. Now let's actually properly mask this out into the shape of a flame. So I'm gonna add a sample texture 2D and create a new texture 2D up here called mask. And I'm gonna add this one called circle. You can download this texture from the Unity Happy Harvest project. They allow you to use their assets in free and commercial projects. So you might as well go ahead and add it to your collection. And for now, we're going to use the black up here for the flame. So I only want the flame to appear inside this mask sprite here. So let's flip it and make it a bit more pronounced by putting it into a power node. And again, we want to clamp this to ensure that we don't have any values outside of the range of zero or one, or we're gonna get some really, really weird results. Now let's add these two together. And clamp that as well. And that is really starting to look quite nice. Now what we wanna do is add some color to this. So let's set up two colors. We're gonna call the first one inner color, and let's make it a nice yellow on HDR mode. And the other is going to be outer color, and let's make that a red, also set to HDR. Now we're gonna plug the output of this into the T of a lerp node, and then plug the inner color into the A, which gives it that nice yellow, and then plug the outer color into the B. And now this will act as our base color. But we don't want all of this red around here. We only want a little bit on the outside. Now, since we know that any black that gets plugged into the alpha becomes transparent, let's flip this into a one minus node and then plug that into the alpha. Okay, now we're gonna add two optional controls if you want them. Back up here at our Voronoi, before plugging it into the one minus node, plug it into a smooth step node. This is gonna give us more fine grain control over the sharpness of the Voronoi in the fire, which you'll see soon. So keep edge one at zero, and you can see the lower we set the second value, the sharper the cutout. It doesn't really look good until around 0 0.75, but if you change it to two, you can see the cutouts are more blurred and less pronounced. So play around with this until you find a style that you like. Let's create a float for that so that we can control it called Voronoi Cutout Sharpness, and I'm gonna default mine to 1.5. And we're gonna do something similar to the gradient noise as well. We're gonna add a smooth step, keep edge one at zero, and let's create a float called noise volume. I'm gonna default mine to one and plug that into edge two. This will let you control how full the flame is. You can see that at 0.5, we're just starting to get those nice flame bits coming up. And at one, it looks pretty good. And at two, it's kind of starting to take over. So again, you wanna play around until you're happy with the style. And let's save and close that. And now we should be seeing a nice fire in our scene. But real quick, let's open up our VFX graph again and add an inner color and an outer color here in the graph. And then plug those into our shader graph colors here. Okay, so to finish it off, we need some sparks and smoke. And I've got a really dark background, so I'm just gonna lighten it up so that the smoke is easier to see. So as a child, let's create another VFX graph and we'll call this sparks and smoke and open that up. 
Now actually, let's delete what's there and create a new simple heads and sparks system, which is really pretty, but it's way more than we need. So let's delete the whole left side and the GPU event and instead create a spawn system and add a periodic burst in there. And let's set the count and delay to random. And we'll change this to one and seven and the delay will make 0.1 and two since they're sparks and we sometimes want nice long delays between the bursts of sparks. However, we also want a bit of consistency going on. So let's add a constant spawn rate of one and the capacity is probably gonna be fine at just a couple of hundred, probably even less, but this is totally fine. And let's get rid of these top three, but change the lifetime to be random between 0.2 and 1.2. Now to get them showing more again, we need to set their position. So let's add a set position and choose arc circle. And we want sparks to spawn anywhere inside the circle. So change this to volume and we can shrink the radius to fit around our fire. Now let's add some velocity and make it random. a little range on the X and somewhere between three and four on the Y. Now in the update, turbulence is great. Let's go ahead and tone down the intensity a little. For the frequency, let's add a random number between one and two and change the octaves to one. These also aren't really slowing down all that quickly. So let's add some linear drag in here at 2.25 to get these slowing down a little bit more. And down in the output particle quad, get rid of set skill X and add a set size over life instead. Let's change the speed range from zero to one here. And let's also add a multiply size. Now we don't want them all to be the same size. So let's add a probability sampling here and change it to float. And we'll give it a 55% chance to be 0.3. 35% chance to be 0.25 and a 10% chance to be 0.2. And finally, let's change the colors. We're going from an orangey yellow to a nice red and we'll give it full alpha at the beginning and end and just kind of fade them in and out. And in case you want some more control, let's go ahead and add a float up here for the spark max, just in case. Now the smoke is pretty easy. Let's duplicate this and bring it over here. And if you want, you can highlight the whole thing and create a group selection and call it smoke. Get rid of periodic burst and change constant spawn rate to five. And to see what we're working with, let's change the main texture to sprite smoke, which again, you can get from the Unity Happy Harvest project. And let's change blend mode from additive to alpha and change it to orient face camera plane and get rid of the multiply size and set scale and change the graph and the set size over life to start small and then get larger over time. And obviously we wanna change the color. We're gonna choose a reddish gray at the beginning and more of an obvious gray at the end with low alpha the whole way through. And up and initialize. If your smoke is too much in the center of the fire, you can just add a set position node and move it up. And then we'll change this add position from overwrite to add so that they'll combine together and one doesn't overwrite the other. And let's decrease the velocity and increase the lifetime. Let's also make the smoke spin over its life by giving it an angular velocity on the Z axis. And we actually don't need anything in the update, so just delete all of that. And finally, if you want to add some glow to give it a bit more life, make sure you have post-processing selected on your camera and add a global volume with a bloom option if you don't have it. I like to set it to 1.1 and 6. And I quite like how it starts to look with an intensity on the inner of 1 and intensity on the outer of about 3. And there you go, you can see it works in both 2D and 3D. Fire is a really common effect for games, so it's really nice to have a great shader at your fingertips to be able to use. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. Like the video if you liked, and my patrons get access to the source files of every tutorial ever made on this channel. So if that interests you, then head on over to Patreon. Thanks so much for watching.
I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Zondra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, Ian Oral, and 60 Plus Maker, as well as our early access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestis, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamata, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Neil, Ben Kerberger, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, Merler, Anastasia Shamalina, and Petter Yurichek. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.